Thinking about buying a drone for a construction site? Before you spend the tall dollars, let's fly through six important tips. Hi, I'm Dan Clark with a safety brief. We take on health and safety hazards in today's demanding industrial and construction work sites, a service of creative safety supply. Drones, also known as UASs, unmanned aircraft systems, have become hyper-popular and hyper-unsafe with hobbyists. They're storming into the workplace, too. As of now, November 2015, the FAA has issued nearly 2,200 commercial permits. At the start of the year, they had granted only a dozen. Because of safety issues, the FAA just announced that even hobbyist drones will need to be registered. They're currently devising a system to do just that. But let's look at the construction setting. Drones can be super efficient, reducing the time required for site assessment, 3D mapping excavations, tall structure inspection, and photographing site layouts all take a fraction of the traditional technology time. Pushing the tech envelope is Japanese self-driving construction equipment maker Komatsu. Partnered with American drone maker Skycatch, drones snap aerial pictures of construction sites. They're then stitched together to make 3D maps. Project managers decide what earth needs to be moved and then send unmanned equipment to do the work. This is according to a fascinating report in Popular Science. So let's get down to it. Drones can be a big benefit, but there are expenses, staffing, liability, and safety issues to think about. Consider these six tips. One, drones need registration. For commercial use, there are two ways to get FAA authorization a Section 333 exemption, or a Special Airworthiness Certificate, SAC. Two, there are no drone zones. Operators must not fly within five miles of an airport unless they have the air traffic control tower's permission. Stadiums and other public places, including some entire cities, are also off-limits. They must fly within the eyesight of the pilot, at less than 100 miles an hour, and only during daylight hours. The UAS must stay below 500 feet, though some permits have a 200-foot max. 3. Drones need a qualified operator. The pilot must be at least 17, pass an aeronautics test, and be vetted by the Transportation Security Administration, the TSA. 4. Drones need liability insurance. What if there's a crash? It won't be covered by your CGL, the commercial general liability policy you have. You'll need a rider. Five, drones must have a flight plan. To notify local pilots that your drone will be sneaking into national airspace, file with flight service. Six, drones are not cheap. Starting at hundreds of dollars, extending to thousands, they are not toys. Don't scrimp on the controller or charger either. So that's a lot to think about. Now what? Will you buy one? Or will you hire out to a subcontractor? Don't forget, there are fewer than 2,200 commercial drone operators in the U.S. So good luck finding one. That's all for this episode, Drones in Construction, Six Tips to Consider. Join me again for more ways to stay safety compliant in today's always changing landscape of safety requirements. I'm Dan Clark of the Safety Brief, a service of Creative Safety Supply. Save 10% off your entire order at creativesafetysupply.com with coupon code BIG10.